Well, the Russian president says this is all because of the West. He says there were two reasons he was forced to make this move. He says he has no choice because, first of all, to use his words, of the threats that have been coming from NATO and also because of the devastating effects of those economic sanctions on the Russian economy. Is he about to press the button and launch a nuclear war? Well, experts say no, he's not. But this raises the tensions in Ukraine and this part of the world to unprecedented levels. An oil terminal burns in Kiev, but after days of bitter fighting, Russian troops have been unable to seize key objectives. This is the remains of a Russian convoy that entered the Ukrainian capital. The tenacity of the Ukrainian forces and resilience of its people clearly frustrating the Russian president. Summonsing top generals, Vladimir Putin ordered them to put nuclear forces on high alert. NATO countries are making aggressive statements with regards to our country. Therefore, I order you to transfer the deterrent forces of the Russian army to a special mode of combat duty. Despite Putin's unprecedented threats, at the same moment Russian negotiators were waiting in neighbouring Belarus to begin peace talks. Ukraine's foreign minister agreeing to meet the delegation on the Ukraine-Belarus border. And if the outcome of these talks will be peace and the end of war, that should be welcomed. But we will not, again, and I, will, I want to make it very clear, we will not surrender. Ukrainian forces still control the capital and claim to have repelled Russian troops from the country's second largest city, Kharkiv, where there's been street-to-street -street fighting with Russian special forces. Earlier in the day, Russian patrols appeared to be making headway into the suburbs, but it didn't last long. Ukrainian civilians playing their part, ambushing them with petrol bombs. This, an abandoned Russian convoy being picked over by Ukrainian troops as reinforcements arrive from the south to bolster the defence. But the Russian artillery continues to fire on Ukrainian positions and missiles continue to explode on the streets of Kiev. We know exactly where the missile hit. Take a look at this. It's carved a crater, much taller than me, down here. The impact then has just smashed the exact centre of the building and ripped out this central structure, collapsing it. And every single room in the wings either side has been devastated. They did not miss. Ukraine's largest cities battered but unbroken. Now, Russia has the world's largest nuclear arsenal, some 4,500 nuclear warheads. Is he going to use them? As we say, no. But it's potentially going to give him, he thinks, the upper hand and to be able to negotiate a face-saving deal. The United Nations estimates that 400,000 Ukrainians have fled to neighbouring countries to escape the Russian invasion of their homeland. Poland and other European nations receiving an influx of refugees, as Jeff Parry reports. From across Ukraine, civilians have been converging here in Lviv. The Polish border is not far away, a promised haven for those fleeing the Russian advance. It's been snowing in Lviv as Ukrainians flee their country in search of a warm welcome in the West. In scenes repeated across Ukraine's train stations, men say goodbye to loved ones before turning back to face the enemy. I'm going to war. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, I have a military responsibility to go and join the army. So you're saying, and you're going to fight? Yes. Thousands of civilians are making a desperate scramble to safety. Mama, mama, mama. It's estimated at least 350,000 people have fled into Poland. Many have relatives and friends to go to, others don't. Just a hope of safety and refuge. While in Lviv, some who could flee have chosen to stay volunteers handing out food and clothing. Because I love my uh, Ukraine and I, lo I love our people and I cannot stay and do nothing. Ukrainians are indeed receiving that warm welcome. Poland, Hungary, Slovakia and Romania among the countries mobilising to help the refugees, providing food, shelter and legal help. The European Union is tightening the screws on Russia, announcing new sanctions, including the shutting down of European airspace to Russian airlines. And for the first time, the EU has voted to fund weapons and fuel to help a country under attack. Europe Bureau Chief Hugh Whitfeld reports. 
One of the biggest anti-war demonstrations overnight was in Berlin, where 100,000 people rallied in front of the Brandenburg Gate. With similar displays of support for Ukraine in London, Prague, Madrid and Rome. And further protests against the war in Russia too, with 900 people now detained there. The conflict has also upended decades of post-World War II foreign policy in Germany, with the Chancellor announcing defence spending will be increased. A seismic move for a country that has tried to go down the line of pacifist policies in the aftermath of World War II. The European Union stepping into the world of defence spending too. For the first time ever, the European Union will finance the purchase and delivery of weapons and other equipment to a country that is under attack. This is a watershed moment. The EU vowing to shut down its airspace to Russian airliners and private jets and ban Russia today in Sputnik to Kremlin-owned news outlets. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has confirmed he is scheduled to speak to Ukrainian President Zelensky later today. The pair exchanged messages last night after the federal government confirmed it will work with NATO to deliver weapons to Ukraine. We're talking to our partners in the United States and the United Kingdom about the nature of such equipment, uh, where it can be sourced for, from. Scott Morrison says the government is still considering whether to expel the Russian ambassador to Australia.